A very good morning to you. I hope you're having a, a good start to the day on this Thursday morning. And uh, today we're going to continue our, our readings in uh, Mark's Gospel. I often think of a gospel like a, a biography, really, and, and Mark has written this great biography of, uh, of the life of Jesus and all of the stuff that he did. And I hope that you're having a, a good time. Now, um, this morning, I've got my cat outside the door. I've, uh, I've kept her outside because uh, she's making such a racket this morning. So if you uh, you do hear any purring, it's not me. It's, uh, it's the cat outside. So uh, today we're going to be thinking uh, about uh, a passage in Mark chapter 2. And um, Jesus, right throughout chapter 2, has been challenging, if you like, the status quo. And it's a bit of an irony because John said that somebody was coming into the world whose boots he wasn't actually worthy of, of tying up. And the religious establishment had been waiting for hundreds of years to... Uh, to have someone come into their society and um, and just to change everything. And yet when Jesus did finally come, they just grumbled all of the time. And we see that right through chapter two. Uh, remember how they grumbled at the beginning of the chapter when Jesus healed the paralyzed man. And then they grumbled when Jesus sat down with the people who needed a doctor, who needed healing. So as we look at our reading today, Let's see once again just how the religious establishment respond to Jesus. And as I say, we're in chapter 2, and this morning's reading we're going to pick up from verse 18. This is what it says. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews the patch of an unshrunk cloth onto an old garment. Otherwise the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins. And both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. It's a, a passage that uh, Christians know very well, but uh, it's one of those ones for me which uh, at first reading you think, what on earth is going on here? Well, I often think about the day that uh, I had the privilege of uh, walking uh, my daughters down the aisle. And it was one of the best days of my life. And I remember a good friend from Florida who uh, prayed in both of the weddings. Uh, they said uh, this great phrase, Lord, today, thank you, because this is a good day. And it just strikes me that as Jesus answers the grumblings of the religious establishment again, that what he was basically saying is that, do you know what, today is a good day. Now, the establishment saw religious purity in terms of fasting, in terms of um, praying, and in terms of giving to the poor. So they couldn't get their heads around the fact that these people weren't fasting like everybody else was. But Jesus' point was this, do you know what? Because I'm here, today is a good day, so, so let's celebrate. And he also points to the fact, if you pick up in the reading, that there's going to be a time when he wasn't going to be there. And when he wasn't there, then, well, that was the time to fast. So Jesus knew that there were going to be good days, and he knew that there were going to be bad days when people followed him. And the disciples in just a few years time would be utterly crushed when they saw this person nailed to a cross. And then they were gonna have a good day when they saw him raised from the dead. So for Jesus, he's got, as always, a bigger agenda uh, at, at work. He's establishing a kingdom and that kingdom is building, if you like, uh, on the traditions of the old 
And you know what it's like when change comes, we don't do well with change. This establishment had their rules and their traditions and, and they, it was really dear to them. But Jesus is saying, as I build my new kingdom, it's like trying to, to sew in a, a, a patch of new cloth into an old garment and it doesn't work. It's like putting new wine into old wineskins. Now, we don't get that in today's society, but the story goes that if you do that, the old wineskin is so cracked and old that the new wineskin, when it, uh, the new wine, when it ferments, it just basically bursts the wineskin. So Jesus' point is this. As I'm building something new, you might not get it, but you need to understand today's a good day. So as we sort of go on into the day, maybe just think about this. Jesus is building something new and something that he invites us to be a part of. But maybe it's something that the world at large won't understand. And if you're thinking about following Jesus, maybe for the first time, just acknowledge the fact that people may not understand what you feel you need to do. That's OK because you're following in the footsteps of a ton of other people who haven't quite fitted into the old way. But know this, Jesus walks with you and Jesus has established something that is so great and amazing. And whether the day is good or whether the day is bad, Jesus has called you to a new way, a new life, a new beginning and a new hope. And so, Basically, whatever happens today, actually, it's a pretty good day. I hope you do realise that for yourself. Have a great day.